What's up guys, CB Modder here back with another video and today we're continuing our gaming on series with weird bits of hardware with gaming on an iPod. Can you play AAA titles off of an old school iPod classic or really any iPod for that matter? And today, well, we're going to answer that and also to do some other tests to see what this guy is actually capable of. So with that being said, I thought, well, why not go ahead and give it a shot and see whether we can play any games at all. Now taking a look back at previous tests that I've done, in theory this should be fine as it is just a storage drive and as we've discovered really any storage drive can have games played off it, however load time will be something we do need to keep in mind. Now with that being said, today our iPod right here is an old school iPod classic 120GB model and it's been around for just about ever, in fact this was my third electronic device I ever got other than a watch and also to, well, my first MP3 player. So this guy is one of my OG pieces of tech. It runs the old school Apple 30 pin connector, which apparently not many people have seen these days, which is a bit weird seeing that 30 pin connectors are still pretty popular, but Apparently people aren't seeing these things. Anyway, this 30 pin connector is based on the USB 2.0 standard in my particular model which is getting a little bit old and ancient and can definitely hamper performance. Now in terms of testing, I do want to note I was running Windows 8.1 for these particular tests and some operating systems and some configurations don't necessarily support the iPod as an external drive. Some of them just see it as an iPod and don't really work properly with it. But for today, I was lucky enough just to be able to plug and play. So with that being said, speaking of playing, let's get into some of the tests that I've done. Now, at first I was expecting to have some troubles actually plugging this in. As I did mention, some operating systems don't exactly work, but again, thanks to Windows Center, just plugged in and everything went and run with it. Now, the first thing that I did was throw up a crystal disk mark and boom, here are our numbers. So, first off, looking at this crystal disk mark, well, yeah, numbers aren't really that great. Seeing that this drive is from over 10 years ago, I'm not expecting the world's greatest performance, but just looking at these sequentials weren't really that great, and overall the performance, whilst I guess was okay for an iPod and technically is okay for playing back music, it really isn't anything special, especially because, well, we're going to be trying and playing some games. For instance, this is a Samsung Flash Bar, and also too, this guy is an external drive that comes in at less than what this guy retails for today on the market. So, uh, yeah, the iPods also do a little bit at a disadvantage. Now, sequential performance was nice to be in the double digits, but they really weren't anything great. And again, comparing it to other drives and even just a standard desktop hard drive, really wasn't anything too special. But with that being said, let's jump into some video games. Can we really run them? And... Yes, in fact, they were able to run. Taking a look at our FPS results, as we can tell by all our videos, FPS were not affected by the fact that we are running a different storage medium. I'm sure some people do ask, why on earth do I still run FPS numbers if obviously we know that they don't make a difference? Well, with that being said, some people still do ask what kind of FPS I got, so again, these are the FPS that I did get for these particular games. Though with that being said, load times and also two starters were something we do need to take a look at. For instance, large open world games like GTA 5 seem to have stutters and drop frames here and there, especially when loading up into new areas, we did get a lot of dropped frames. Even though I was running 16 gigs of RAM, which is plenty of RAM to go ahead and run for a game like GTA 5, we were still unfortunately seeing some loss in performance. The FPS counter was still counting 100, two, three, four hundred FPS depending on what game we were running. However, a lot of games did experience some loading issues when it come to actually loading into scenes. And for example, games like Rise of the Tomb Raider run basically flawlessly. However, when you do load into new scenes or you do load up a game save, I did notice for the first about 60 or so seconds there was a bit of jitter and jutter kind of being a really weird experience there. But once those games loaded up, they were perfectly playable there. Now, on top of actual jutters and FPS and that kind of stuff, we also do have the the problem of load times. Now load times wasn't really great, it was actually really really bad. For instance, GTA 5 took so long to actually load into the game so I could actually start the load test that I actually went to class and came back by the time it actually finished loading. It literally took all day for the game to actually load so it wasn't really that great. Now, I'm not exactly sure whether it was just my iPod or whether it's all iPods in general or there's some sort of weird configuration going on here, but GTA, in, GTA 5 rather in particular 
took forever to load and I'm not exactly sure why that was. Now, other games like Rise of the Tomb Raider we tested and sure their load times weren't great, but they did actually load in a reasonable amount of time. So for example, if you wanted to pick up your iPod and take it with you to say class or something and just run some games of this guy, you could in theory play with it before you had to leave that classroom and go to your next class. So yes, the iPod is able to actually load up games, but for some reason GTA 5 was really, really affected. Now this also too translated into loading up things like the benchmarking utilities in some games, but also to cutscenes. Rise of the Tomb Raider was a great example with this. Any cutscene seemed to sort of take a really long time to load and then kind of started a little bit when it started playing and then obviously loaded in and worked really fine. So gaming sort of worked in terms of just playing, but when it came to loading anything, yeah, things really did go downhill. But that being said, once it did load, again, it worked just about fine for what a external USB drive would well, kind of deliver with really heavy overheads. Now, jumping into video editing and creative applications, I did also too want to throw this guy sort of into the mix and see what we could get there. Over on the Photoshop side, it was actually really good and games, or rather Photoshop files loaded up just fine. I was able to edit things. In fact, all the images you're seeing here were edited off of this drive in terms of the Photoshop side and also to uh, standard 1080p video was easy enough to edit off in Premiere Pro from the iPod. However, 4K 10-bit video like our Panasonic GH5 or 10-bit 4K RAW from our Blackmagic Cinema camera really, really didn't like the iPod. It took forever to load in and then just did not play back. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a problem there. But I guess with that being said, that then leads us to the question of should you really run this? And well, the average cost of an iPod Classic coming here in Australia 2018 is around 200 to 300 Australian dollars for a good condition refurbished unit with well over $300 price point for a new inbox unit. Technically speaking, well, not even been touched at all. And for about a $339 unit, which is a not too bad unit, it gives us a $2.11 price tag per gigabyte for our storage medium. Whereas if you were just to get a standard external desktop hard drive or even just external portable hard drive, we're looking at around $175 for this particular WD Elements drive, which costs just five cents per gigabyte. So you kind of also do have to weigh up the actual cost factor. Do you go with $2.11 per gigabyte or do you go with five cents per gigabyte? And on top of that, the external drive offers USB 3 connectivity for much better uh, throughput and speed. And if that wasn't enough, I guess also too, the fact that these little drives are really easy to kind of, well, wreck as they are a little bit on the older side, they're not exactly the most, well, world's best suited drive for gaming on the go. Now again, for these tests that I did run with, with Windows 8.1, we also too need to consider, well, not only is price an issue, form factor an issue, the connectivity an issue, but also to the operating systems. Again, as I did mention, not exactly all operating systems are going to be working equally with them easy enough just to pick up this guy and use as an external drive. So do keep in mind, not all PCs can actually run this. And if you're thinking finally of just opening this guy up and stealing the hard drive out of it, you're also too kind of out of luck. As Apple teamed up with Toshiba back in the day to make our little hard drives to go in this guy, running custom interfaces to work with the iPod, which kind of makes sense seeing that they're iPod drives, but don't have a standard SATA interface. So it doesn't really work if you wanted to go ahead and use it as an external drive there. And I guess I'm sure there's someone out there who's gonna point out, I've got this adapter that I can pull hard drives out and use them. Good for you, but really, if you're gonna be buying one of these to buy an adapter to do all that, you might as well just spend that money on a really good external desktop drive. So TLDR of this video, can you play AAA titles off one of these guys? Uh, the answer is yes. Load times and also to actual any stuttering in game will definitely be affected as game times took forever to load in a lot of cases, but once they did load in, they definitely did work fine. However, with that being said, price per gigabyte of an iPod really isn't that great, especially when it comes to gaming with well over the $2 per gigabyte price point. And the fact that these guys really only clock in around 120 to 160 in their largest capacities if they haven't been modded aftermarket wise, they're really not that great when it comes to mass storage either. And to top it off, if that was enough, the 30 pin Apple connector, this little guy right here, is limited to USB 2.0 speeds, so the speed department is also too hampered. And for the same price as a really good condition or refurbished iPod, you could buy yourself a really large capacity external desktop drive or even external portable drive. So uh, yeah, the iPod itself really isn't great value. But all in all, yes, you can play AAA titles off of an old school iPod. But with that being said, let me know down in that comment 
comment sections what you want me to test in terms of gaming on in this whole gaming on series and also do let me know if you run something that's a little bit weird like an iPod to run some files off I reckon they'll make really cool kind of external drives to carry stuff around I mean retro iPod you can listen to music and pull some files off so that would be cool but when it comes to actual performance really not that great again I've left some links down in that description box to well some iPods if you want to try and pick some up otherwise thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one